Unfortunately, we don't have any paper for the program for some reason. I don't know why, but I have it in my presentation and I would say some words for you at the beginning of this uh, seminar. It's also in the Odebe Connect and there will be most of you in the net. But in this hall, I hope the atmosphere will be free, so it's not so serious even we are talking about serious games. And we have five uh, lecture, lectures here. And I, at the first I want to introduce some of the, these uh, lectures for you at the first. Uh, here's a, uh, David E. Gagnon from Winscon Madison. And uh, he's a specialist of uh, mobile, mobile learning and local learning and things like that. And he has developed a solution called Eris Games. And he will talk a little, little about that game and a little about the pedagogy, pedagogy uh, around that games. And then we have uh, Nicola Witton from Manchester. Uh, and he's an older researcher there, and I think he's one of the most famous game researchers in, in Europe. And he is a specialist of digi digital games and pedagogy. And I know he will, she will uh, tell you something about Wykotsky, for example, which you haven't here, perhaps, well, a joke. That's the basic of the whole uh, cultural learning. And I'm very happy that when I heard that she will talk a little about those, those basic things. Goals, rules, feedback, the free will. That's the basic of the game learning. And I hope it will be here in this atmosphere and in your attitudes. Well, first thing first, here is the well and, and it's free and you can use it and there's space, a lot of space. So, the construction of this seminar day is like this. And the metaphor of this day is the way we will in the Epicon. That's the main reason. It's a metaphor of informal learning, lifelong learning, cultural learning, and the situational learning. And all these lectures will go around pedagogy and games. Perhaps there will, not, there will be not so much new things, but I hope that we have some new things after we, we have left here. The, the structure of this uh, seminar will be, there's uh, comments. Here, here is Pasi uh, Silander. Uh, his, his, his comment, uh, I think, well, he will uh, th tell uh, himself, it's about e-learning, uh, phenomenon learning, and uh, how to put together vocabulary learning and uh, general learning in, for example, in high school. Uh, then we have uh, Teemu Mäki who's artist and art philosophy, and he will talk a little about uh, art and games. And the third lecture or comment coming from Rovaniemi or at the day from Helsinki University, Mariana Kangas will 
talk a little about playful or gameful learning. And I think the gameful learning will be some kind of context in this day. And then there will be some of stimulus, two videos I want to show you, and then here's two who guys who want to debate. At the first, uh, Nico will say something, and uh, David, <laughs> David will answer via his own lecture. And I hope they will discuss. They start to argue yesterday. I, I, I really want to see that they are going on today with their own uh, lectures. And then I hope there will be much, much, much more discussion. There's a room for discussion and things like that via uh, Twitter and in, in here in hall. I wonder if I have a AC presentation in the other side of the, of the uh, screen. And we have three blocks. At the first, how we use our language, what's the knowledge, what's the, what's the knowledge practice, and things like that. It's coming from the uh, define of the OECD, who thinks that the skills and competencies in the future are something else than substance knowing. And the first black block is about the use tools interactively, how we use our language and how we use our knowledge. And the second block is coming from interacting. And in every block, those two will appear, I hope, or discuss. We will back these three. The program is here. Nicola will start. And then David will answer. And then we have a discussion. And the hashtag in the Twitter is uh, Epicorn. But I think we will see the first stimulus at first. All of us have a common interest in the future. Kids. What does the future hold for them? Our current system is failing our kids and our country. We know that America is falling behind. We are not getting kids where they need to be in reading, science, and math. Education is a critical part of the solution to every problem we face. The key question is, what does the future of learning look like, and how will we create it? When we think about the future, we're usually doing one of two things, dreaming or dreading. When we dream, we start with an idea, a positive trend, and take this idea to its logical conclusion. We imagine a utopia that represents our hopes for all that's possible. Maybe that idea is a belief in the promise of technology to transform learning. What would that look like? We might dream of being able to assess each student's needs, and then magically give them exactly what they need, exactly when they need it. But this isn't possibly perfect and simplistic, ignoring the complexities of the learning process. When we dread, we start with a fear, a downward trend, and we likewise play out this idea of logical solution. We imagine a dystopia, once we build with our fears of what might happen in the future. Here, the very same issue, the use of technology in the classroom, might veer off in a completely wrong direction with dreadful outcomes. Kids trapped in a matrix of robotic instruction. Of course, this is equally simplistic and ignores technology's potential. Whether dreaming or dreading, our role in the future we imagine is usually passive, where the future is something that happens to us and to those around us. But there's a third way we can think about the future. Between dreaming and dreading lies designing. For designers, the future is a far-off place. It's a place where they work every day. Design is a form of activism. We imagine the future we want, then pick up the tools to start building it. Designers see the world as a kit of parts. They reshape and reassemble the best pieces from what's already out there to create something new and better. So what does it take to rethink learning? It's not about replication. It's about selecting and integrating many different parts to create the foundation. 
creation of a new model. This is the art of integrative design. From birth to adulthood, society's purpose is critical to accelerate our learning. And what's most important for kids today is learning how to learn. Society must develop learners ready to tackle challenges they cannot anticipate. Education is a system we created to serve that purpose. Over 100 years ago, we invented modern schooling to send kids to one of three main places, the factory, the farm, or the university. We always lost some kids, but this model provided a middle-class life for most, and economic growth. Over time, the economy changed. Farm jobs diminished, and office jobs surged. College grads always had better access, but there was also a path straight from high school to the office. As office work changed, it got harder to get there from high school. Eventually, that path disappeared. College became the main path to opportunity. We started sending more kids to college, but we didn't change the overall system. Education broke down, trapping too many kids on paths that no longer made sense for them or for the country. As farm and factory jobs continued to decline, we started to lose even more students. The retail sector rose up to catch them, but these low-skilled, low-wage jobs often fail to move kids forward in life. With the decline of good jobs, kids had nowhere to go. Retail increasingly offered the only alternative. We lost even more students to dead-end futures. More high school graduates tried to get into college, but found they were not prepared for success, academically or financially. Fortunately, community colleges emerged to help people re-engage in their own learning and seek new pathways forward. They helped many students get back on track, but most students still found their way to community college on their own or by accident. Today, far too many kids exit the K-12 system feeling stuck. Our model of school is broken. To understand how it's broken, we need to look inside. We see a system of six parts which create a student's experience. First, what they learn, how they learn, and how we know they're learning, and also where and when learning happens and who's involved. How we configure these parts determines how kids move through the learning process. More often than not, these parts form rigid barriers blocking the way forward or putting kids on the wrong path. Various innovators have focused on adjusting one or two of these parts to help kids move forward. This has spurred important progress. But this approach is not the answer. What we need is learning integrated by design, addressing all parts at once rather than one or two in isolation. When we get this right, we make it possible for kids to accelerate their learning, to move forward in the direction they want to go. The best design models require kid power. Students must apply themselves to the learning process. It's our job to give them this chance, and we believe that's more possible now than ever before. Our research shows that a few key attributes are central to the new models we need. Future of learning models must be personalized, learner-driven, applied, cost-effective, and tech-enabled. And of course, kids don't power this system on their own. For every model, a set of outside conditions can either block its progress or help it take off and really work for kids. Without the right conditions, better models cannot take hold and scale. But just imagine what the future of learning would look like if we aligned these new models with the conditions that help them succeed. It would be a future where schools help kids get what they need to become successful learners and to accelerate their learning. But while school remains critical, it's not the only place where learning happens. Kids must be able to explore all their opportunities for learning, both in school and beyond. When we create a single integrated system, students will practice becoming lifelong learners, ready to go on to college or good jobs, ready for the challenges and opportunities of the future that awaits them. This is society's new purpose. We're already mapping this new learning ecosystem. We call our map the human capital continuum, the paths that learners travel from birth to age 26 as they prepare for success in the adult world, and where far too many get stuck at key transition points. At Two Revolutions, we design and launch future of learning models and help catalyze the conditions within which they can thrive. We are partnering with forward-thinking governments, funders, nonprofits, and entrepreneurs to innovate all across the human capital continuum. This is the first block 
Bear from me will start.